Tadayoshi Yamamoru. It's an understatement to say that he has had an impact on the Dragon Ball franchise. A former student at a Shaolin temple, starting at a young age who was later hired by Shindo Productions as an in-between animator working on a blockbuster series at the time by Akira Toriyama, Dr. Slump. However, after the conclusion of the anime ending in 1984, another rose which would surpass the popularity of the former, Dragon Ball. With its first episode airing in 1986, within this new series, he would contribute key animation to 15 episodes as well as one Dragon Ball movie being Mystical Adventure and also Path to Power, a retelling of the Dragon Ball series released in 1996 and contribute in between animation within 6 episodes within the main series. In Dragon Ball Z he did key animation in up to 42 episodes and in 11 Dragon Ball Z movies as well as the Bardock special and many others such as Yo Son Goku and his friends return. Then the next series Dragon Ball GT he did key animation for 10 episodes and Dragon Ball Super he worked as a key animator for 3 as well as doing the key animation for 2 openings and the 8 endings. However this is just solely key animation and in between work. He has also served the role as an animation supervisor within 19 episodes of Dragon Ball Z, 9 in Dragon Ball GT, 2 in Super and 13 episodes of Super Dragon Ball Heroes as well as multiple Dragon Ball movies. Furthermore, he has worked as a character designer many times and became one of the lead promo artists. Then there is his work as Chief Animation Supervisor for Battle of the Gods and Resurrection of F, which on top of being Chief Animation Supervisor was also a director. He has contributed a plethora of work into the franchise during his life. There are some like Nakatsuru who have been active in the franchise for decades who worked on Dragon Ball, DBZ, GT and Super, or Maeda who also worked back on Dr. Slump into Dragon Ball and through a lot of Dragon Ball Z and then later made his departure. However, few if any have worked since Dr. Slump all the way through Dragon Ball Super and even at the moment Heroes. However, regardless of his dedication to the franchise, to many his modern work has painted him more as a villain of the series rather than a hero he could be once regarded as. Heavy corrections, plastic tones with added highlights and moving away from the style many fans loved or a result of this. However, this video will seek to shed light on what made him so renowned, how he rose through the ranks from an in-between animator to one day directing a movie. Join me today to look at why Tadayoshi Yamamoro was one of Toei's best. So the first aspect is his style. As author and writer Akira Toriyama's style evolved, it would also impact the depiction of the characters in the anime. The rounder esque look to Toriyama's work started to fade away gradually as the years went on, and over time, a more refined and sleeker look was given to characters in all aspects of their design from smaller ears down to more refined clothing. This would fit the more serious tone the series had set. However, there would be many such as Ebisawa whose episodes generally still carried a rounder touch in regards to everything, even shading. Yuchiyama was also much the same and for others like Hisada, even throughout an episode of his characters were definitely better proportioned than the latter two and the general look wasn't as rounded but the style was more rough and unrefined when put next to Toriyama's in this time period. However, this isn't to denounce their takes as bad, but more so to set the pretense of why Yamamoro stood out. And Yamamoro would really get to shine in episode 122, which he would supervise and provide key animation for. One major factor compared to not all but many was the shading. His style of shading showed great shape language. For example, the shapes are simple and clean and most importantly are readable at a distance. Furthermore, when shading, his shapes were generally more sharper which went better with the tone of the show as well as the more angular designs the series had moved over to. This is in stark contrast to others who had a more abstract and curved shapes within their designs which could also provide rather poor visibility creating flatter designs and actually rather demoting the quality of the base drawing itself. Overall his style of shading added a solid and three-dimensional look to characters and made his work quite recognizable. He even added a bit of shading under the cheekbone which added more definition to the face which is a small stylistic take I don't really remember seeing before this episode. However it is a small thing that would appear in many episodes to come. Furthermore, when it came to features such as the anatomy, again, his take was quite refined for this time period, taking on many aspects of Toriyama in regards to a more solid and blocky look with the muscles. Specifically back within this episode of 122, where we get a more refined take on the eyes with thinner eyebrows and smaller pupils, which was quite a unique take 
in this time period when compared to others, who are still going with the thicker eyebrows and pupils, and my Ada in future episodes would also continue on with this take. That's not to say this was every supervisor's approach, as Ebisawa is definitely an exception in this regard, but this take was still something unique at this time of this episode's debut. However, these stylistic takes matured even further over time, with eyebrows, for example, generally looking thinner in most episodes, and other muscle groups such as the bicep and tricep would often be drawn as solid, blocky shapes, just like Toriyama's work once again. Additionally, he would also take over from Maeda as character designer for Movie 8, and implement many of the design choices previously mentioned, and some of these character sheets designed for the movies would also be repurposed into the main series for the next major arc, the Boo arc. So even though Nakatsuru was the character designer for the Boo arc, Yamamoru definitely had an impact on the look of it and further ushered in this more cleaner and fresher take Dragon Ball Z was moving towards. But the allure to his work wasn't just his style. The episodes he supervised were filled to the brim with gorgeous and quality artwork. Proportions were on point, the shading was excellent, characters always felt three-dimensional and the characters would always be packed with great expression. It comes at no surprise that he would be selected to replace Maeda as character designer for the Dragon Ball Z movies going forward, as well as having a hand in the future promotional work. But his promo work is also of particular interest. Personally, I think he was one step ahead of his predecessor at this time. His art felt solid and compact, but he also had some particularly unique composition to some of his posters, such as this piece here which he drew Goku and Vegeta in the back with just pencil, something quite unique, and he even notes himself in an interview looking back that it had an air to it that was different than posters up until then, and how he challenged himself to do something new. He also designed one of my all-time favorite Dragon Ball posters for Wrath of the Dragon. The composition itself is great, but it is equally drawn well. I love how Goku is shooting up to the camera and you have this golden dragon just launching up behind him, which is also some great symbolism. And Goku's face in particular feels so three-dimensional and portrays a good understanding of form. But so far we have just observed mostly his style, but what about his own animation? How does it hold up next to others in the series? Well, Dragon Ball Z, as stated in previous videos before, relied a lot on artwork to drive a scene rather than animation. But Yamamura generally had a lot of movement with the characters' bodies and was able to pull off a lot of difficult angles. Equally, as said, his artwork was always top notch, so the end result is someone who is not only more than competent in terms of animation, but can also input A tier quality artwork to match. And there is no better cut to embody all those traits together than 232 between Goku and March and Vegeta, within this episode also being supervised by himself. The timing in regards to the easing in and out of this cut between all the action is just overall flawless and provides such a smooth transition in between all the blows these characters inflict on each other. The body language additionally is great with a lot of these really exaggerated poses, even as Goku dashes towards Vegeta especially, his whole body posture feels organic and even at times quite dynamic with some squash and stretch with Goku's torso as it crunches in. There were also some other small tidbits worth mentioning that may go unnoticed such as this little hop in the air right before he lunges in with his knee. It's a little bit of character acting and is a small touch but it gives build up and adds fluidity to the action rather if he had just gone straight to a blow with the knee. He also adds several pen strokes to the eyebrows which was a small stylistic touch that Toriyama also had in his work. And it would be an injustice not to speak about the quality of the artwork throughout the entirety of this cut. There are stacks of these amazing close-ups as well as all these beautiful impact frames. I think it'd be no far stretch to say that he packed movie level quality in all fields within this fight. And that's why Tadayoshi Yamamoru was one of the best. So thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed, please show your support in the comments or with a like. And I decided to do this video in the same format as the Masaki Sato one, taking a more analytical approach over commentary, just because I think one, it's fun to switch between different styles. I really enjoy both. And also I've decided to turn this into a little series, just going over some of the top animators in Dragon Ball. And it's partly why I decided to keep the features at the end. I just don't think it flows as well to randomly chuck in at the start of a video like this. And so with that, anyway, the main featured artist for today is Dragon Ball Art. This guy has some really great work. Love this piece of Vegeta. So go give him a follow. And with that final note, I hope to see you in the next video.